Okay, so I want to talk to you about the latest improvements in Vectical, speeding up Vectical, experiments with compilation. So what is all this about? Um, last year I introduced Vectical in the Eurotical conference 2015. Vectical is a tool for doing numerical math in Tickle. So of course we can do numerical math in Tickle already today without any additional packages. So if you have this equation, for example, which solves the quadratic equation, you can transfer it into Tickle by using the expr command. So basically you stick a dollar sign in front of each variable and you convert the square root, instead of driving it into a text editor, you convert it into a function called skvrt. And then by this you can compute this equation within Tickle. But there is no direct support for vector math in Tickle. So for example, in textbooks, you will see other signs, like these funny arrows there. They tell you that um, this A and B actually has multiple components. And if you want to compute that scalar dot product, um, you have, it's defined as a sum and you have to write it out in the standard Vexpr stuff as four lines of code. You have another variable x z to zero. You have to add to that, compile it into a loop. And you can imagine that usually the, the um, equations are not so simple. They are more complex. It's very tedious to transfer it into that loop. But if you use Vectical, you can just use uh, the language from the textbook. x equals a times b transposed. This is an alternative representation of the dot product and it looks very similar to textbook math. Okay, so as an example, I presented last year if you want to transfer linear regression. So linear regression means you have some uh, points and you want to fit a line, a straight line through this. Then you can look up the formula. I copied this from Wikipedia, the math. And in pure tickle, it would look like the block of code on the right side. So you have many variables, many loops, everything. And if you want to, uh, if you use Vectical, you can just write the equations like you see them in, in the math. And I also showed you how this works in practice. So I did a little demonstration um, regression tool. Maybe you recognize this um, program. It is from the uh, widget demo demonstration. You have these uh, points, you can drag them around in theory. Okay, I will. You put it in the background. It ah, was PG, okay. so. Here it is. And the difference to the standard widget demonstration is that now you have this line which tracks um, and tries to fit the straight line through the points. And you can demonstrate if you move all of them to one, then the line is defined purely by the outlier here. <laughs> but if you have them equally distributed, then you can move that one point and it doesn't change a lot. But you can also fit, for example, a parabola. This is, would be very complicated to do in pure tickle, but with a back tickle, there is an easy formulation to fit the parabola through that. Okay, so how does all of that work today? Um, back tickle is a two layered system. So, first, you have this vexpr command. This is implemented in tickle, it's a compiler, and it compiles the expression um, that you want to compute into a sequence of function calls. You can see the um, result of the compiler. So it has a few upper commands, then it sets A, and then it does this chain of calling uh, underlying uh, basic uh, functionality. And these are is a runtime that is uh, written in C and does a fast computation of vectorized, uh, vectorized arguments. And by this, we can get this impressive speed. So these benchmarks are also old. They are from the last year. You can see the, the linear regression that I've shown you with an increasing number of data points. And on the y-axis, you have the number of data points processed per second. Um, and the, the black line below down here, this is if you use standard tickle, expert functionality. So even if you just use like uh, five, um, um, five uh, data points, then you can see that tickle is the slowest of all. But if you use vec tickle, the line over here, you have, a, you have a big improvement, about 100 times faster than if you use the standard expert function. And all the other curves, they are competitors with similar functionality like BLT vector, or um, this is nap, I guess. And this is, um, no, this is, this is nap, this is vec tickle, this is BLT, and this would be a pure C, um, pure C implementation. Okay, it's still slower, you can see it's still below the line of C, but it's still, it's already a bit fast. And now I will show you some live demonstration, what you actually can do with Vectical 
what you couldn't with uh, pure takeoff. To be honest, with a linear regression, um, the uh, most time it takes to actually draw the line <laughs> in the circles. And the regression itself is only a minor part of the speed. But with this demonstration, um, I will show you in a second uh, what you can do, uh, which would be much too slow in pure tickle. For example, this is a, is a plot tool, a two-dimensional plot tool. I made a small bridge. Um, you can enter some code here. And if you run this code, it is converted into a TK image. And um, so if I plot a pure sign, for example, you would see hor uh, vertical stripes. If I plot, plot the sign of Y, you see um, horizontal stripes. If I multiply them, you have seen it already, you get this funny square. Oops, there's a parse error. Yes, it must be multiplied. You get that uh, funny square pattern. And if I now put R1 times Y. So what is R1? R1 is coupled to the slider down here. So I can actually move that slider and have the pattern change. I can put in another one. Oops, it's the wrong position. I can move the slider also here. And I can change um, the, the width of the plot. And as you can see, this is fully smooth despite we are computing uh, 10,000 pixels for every frame. So this is really working fast. Maybe you are still not impressed, so let's try um, another example. Um, this one I already prepared. We can actually load an image. Now I have to uh, make this smaller. This beamer resolution is really bad. Oh, I can't see the code <laughs> on it. This was too, too much. Okay. So what are we doing now? We, we open an image. This image is put into a variable input. And um, by slicing, I can try to change the alpha channel. This is uh, the first component of the image is the y coordinate. The second is the x coordinate. The third is the color plane. Number three is the alpha channel. So if I now, OK, forget about this. You can't see the sliders. I have to restart it again, sorry. So if I now move that slider, you will see that the image gradually fades off because it blended to the background. Um, alternatively, we could change the zero uh, and the first component, this is the red and the green channel of the image. And if you now change the slider, we can make the sun rise or we can make the moon shine. And if you are still not impressed, I prepared another example, which is uh, so complex I won't key it in now. So first uh, load the image as it is. And I want to deform the image. So for example, if I pull the first slider, I can change the strength of the deformation. If I pull the second slider, I can change the frequency. So it's fast, it's very, very slow. And if I can change this one, I can change the phase. And for show effect, I can run an animation. And it looks like as if there, is, uh, there are water waves traveling along the image, maybe a bit uh, less strong. And as you can still see, all of that um, code runs fast enough in Vectical that we can ca compute uh, 200,000 pixels per frame. So that's really, it's running on the CPU, it's not special graphics code, it's just pure Vectical. Okay. So this was a live demo. I've shown you how great Vectical is. Now I will show you how it sucks. Vectical sucks a lot if you're doing scalar math. Why is that? Okay, so for example, this is a typical benchmark function. It computes the Collatz conjecture. It's just some odd integer uh, function which iterates until you reach, uh, reach one. And this is implemented as, as a pure tickle code and as a Vectical procedure. 
and um, it looks a bit nicer in Vectical than in the Beautical, but not that much, but it is 10 times slower. Why is that? Because in the case of the scalar math, this function here is bytecoded by Tickle. The nice work of Donald Fellows, everything is bytecoded, it runs within the uh, interpreter of Tickle. There is no function call inside. It's still not as fast as a C function because all variables have dynamic type, they are checked every time if it's integer float, whatever. Um, but it's running within the tightest loop of the interpreter. Whereas this function, this is compiled by me into a series of function calls. At every iteration we have uh, four and a half function calls. And function calls are very expensive, they are not bytecoded. So it calls us into the C runtime four and a half times per iteration and this makes it uh, ten times slower. It's only faster if you process a lot of data at once in the C callback. It's not as fast as pure tickle if you process just a single item. Vectical also sucks a bit less at doing complex operations. So for example, um, the vectical runtime it defines something for multiplying two vectors, adding two vectors, but it doesn't uh, define something for, for doing this operation. So this is de uh, decomposed into a series of um, expressions, like, like this one down here. So we have two temporary variables, which are um, uh, get the, the products and then are added together. This means that in the end, um, the program runs three times over the data. If you would code this up in, in, in pure C, you would just do a single pass over the data. And all the temporaries, you do not allocate a vector as long as the result for the temporaries, but they are held in registers. And this means that in the end, this loop runs approximately three times faster than Vectical. Of course, 50 times uh, faster as, as pure tickle for long vectors, but still we do not reach the speed of pure C. What can we do about this? We could uh, try to compile Vectical into, into, into native code. Because um, this, this vector language is basically very well suited to compilation. You, you know that you have lots of similar data, you run a tight loop, you could compile it into, into, pure, into, into machine code. And there is an experimental branch, which you can find on GitHub, where there is another um, function called jitproc, and it compiles your vectical procedure into native code. Uh, you have, uh, in this experimental implementation, you need to specify the type of your variables, of your inputs. So you tell them it's, it's a double vector of length n, and y is a double vector of length n. And then it's able to compile that one into native code. Uh, it does so by first decomposing the thing into static single assignment, then compiles it into C, and the C is finally compiled via the TCC compiler into code that runs inside your um, argument. So, for example, let's have a look at, at, at the scalar function. So, unfortunately, Donald is not there. He designed this scalar benchmark function. Um, it computes the cosine by doing a um, polynomial expansion. And um, the, the black line that you can see here, these are the results, the benchmark results for three similar functions, scalar functions, <coughs> run by standard tickle procedure. If you run them by um, vec tickle, this, like this function, you see it's around 10 times slower because of all that overhead function calling. If you use that um, experimental JIT branch, in the end, it becomes 10 times faster than the pure tickle version, so 100 times faster than, than the pure vec tickle version. And the C code that comes out of it, it looks very similar to if you would write this uh, manually, provided that you have annotated your code with the correct, um, correct uh, data types. So let's now proceed to the, to the other example that I've shown you, the, the, the squaring, this complex operation. Um, this line over here is, um, is the result if you use uh, pure vectical, uh, vectical as it's, as it's today. If we now use the experimental JIT branch and run the same benchmark, it looks like this. So for, for, small, um, for small vectors, we actually won. Why? I, I mean, we have a factor of three or four uh, increase in speed for small vectors. But then there is a crossover and at some point uh, this new uh, machine compiled code, funny machine compiled code, is actually slower than the practical version. Why is that? The reason is relatively simple. The reason is the TCC compiler is a relatively bad compiler. 
it, uh, it compiles everything into, um, it, it does basically the same mistake that pure vectical. It multiplies two numbers, pushes it on the stack, loads it from the stack back, and this takes time. If you use the GCC compiler, use compile the, the code from the vectical um, machine code compiler with GCC into machine code, you win by a large margin. You win for a factor of ten over the, the uh, of five factor of five over the standard vectical, but the TCC compiler is just not optimizing well enough. And the thing is that um, if you use TCC, you have these nice features. It runs, it's, it's very small, it's just one or two megabytes of footprint. It runs in your program, you don't need to save a file to disk, load it, compile it, everything. It just works somehow, but um, it's optimizing too big to be useful for, um, for such a JIT backend. So the JIT compiler cuts down the one-time costs, as you can see, but TCC is too weak. For an experiment, I tried to use another um, JIT generator. It's called SLJIT. It generates machine code from simple instructions. And combined with TCC together, we can almost reach the speed of GCC or yeah, match the speed of GCC. But this would be a lot, a hell of a lot more work. Because uh, in C, I can just push in some temporaries, don't mind where they are. And with this SLJIT, I basically did this manually. It was just an experiment. It cannot be used for any other function than for this one. Okay, so can you use that thing already? Yes, you can. Yes, we can, but you don't want to. The thing is, um, this language that the JIT compiler supports is very restricted. At the moment, slices are not supported, which makes it very unusable for all the stuff that I've shown you before. There are no for loops. You can only use while to, for looping. The reductions aren't working properly. If you call a function, that will mess up the type inference. So if you call um, a function which is not a vectical function, it doesn't know what the return type of that function is, and you lose all the advantage. It will compile, but in the end, it will not be faster than the pure vectical version. Also, you have to um, annotate your functions with the correct type. In the end, it would work like this. If you call the function, it looks up if is there a function already compiled for that data types. If not, compile it and then run. But uh, this is all not, uh, not working. And I'm sure there are a lot of bugs. Um, then the other thing is, was it difficult to do? It's around 2,000 lines of code to compile this restricted subset. And some things will never work because it's simply impossible. It's the same thing that Donald struggles over when compiling standard tickle. For example, consider we have a function that uh, sets by up bar uh, the variable x in, in the up level procedure. And we call that one from back tickle. In standard back tickle that works, you can introduce the variable x. But if you use a real machine code compiler to do a static compilation of that one, it tells you x is not defined. That's what's happening currently, because it cannot know that the procedure set x will set a variable named x. So these things will never work. Um, and even if these uh, variables exist here, they are held as a C object. They are not accessible as a real tickle variable. It would be too slow. They are held in the register, so you could not access them from the outside. Another thing is uh, return codes. For example, in tickle, we can write a function which returns a break code. And this means end the loop on the upper level. This is completely impossible to do in C. I mean, if you, if you call that function in standard back tickle, this works. I think it spits out six or something. Um, if you would do that in, in a compiled back tickle, we, could, we needed to check that at every function invocation that there could be a break return code. That's really a uh, hell of a lot of work. And if you make it work, then in the end, um, you, it will slow down the, the compiled language. Uh, just another thing, I don't want to talk about it. So, that's kind of a conclusion. I tried this compilation to native code using uh, TCC. And TCC has a lot of advantages, so it is very small, it accepts NCC code, and um, uh, you have very easy code generation, but it's actually too slow to be really useful. If I would do it again, I would probably link in LLVM. And this is the point where I asked yesterday about um, the C++. LLVM is a very large library. It's like 20 or 30 megabytes in binary size. 
Um, it's written in C++, so you have to use a C++ compiler and the code generation is much more complicated. In, in TCC, I can just call the uh, vectical RP functions. For, for LLVM, I need to push in bytecodes and this is very complicated. But as an um, advantage, it would have a strong optimizer. I also looked into different um, JIT engines. There is SLJIT, this one is in C, but all the others, NanoJIT, LuaJIT, they are written in C++ and um, they are used for different backends. For example, NanoJIT is the um, compiler which is used in Firefox to compile J JavaScript to machine code. But all these um, backends, they are either too limited or they are using C++, they have a restrictive license. So I'm currently at the point where I've largely given up the whole project because it's very complicated. And um, I, I am waiting for Donald to complete his work on compiling the standard tickle. And maybe then in the future we can hook up the VEC tickle stuff into that one. But I think it would be too complicated to continue on my own and, uh, and have two incompatible, um, incompatible projects working on accelerating code. So here comes my conclusion. So Backtickle provides an easy interface to numeric math and tickle. I think I could convince you that it's relatively uh, easy to write uh, relative complex um, calculations. And the performance is superior if compared to other packages, but it's still worse than C. And with a JIT compilation, we could speed up by a factor of 10 or even 100, but TCC is still simply too weak. And the question is, do we want to rewrite it in C++ and then lose LLVM? And we can then also use C++ within Backtickle, which would ease a lot many of the functions. It could be cut down the code size by a factor of three, maybe, if we could use C++ also in Backtickle. One remark, there is a work go on in GCC5 to make GCC a library. So maybe it could be making it yeah, that might be very interesting. If you can then feed C code, like you can with TCC. Yes, there was work going on in GCC5. I don't know, GCC5 just, just came out, but uh, I don't know really, no, I never used it, but I've seen uh, some work on it. Yeah, that's interesting. But on the other hand, it would still be a very huge uh, library probably, a few hundred megabytes. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> uh, with the TCC, the, the charm is that I can ship it with Vectical. You won't notice if it grows by one megabyte. You won't really notice. But I cannot ship a GCC compiler with with Vectical package. <clears throat> yes. Have uh, you thought about again? Here I am talking about SQLite once again. But have you thought about the opportunities of using uh, piggybacking on top of SQLite? Um, SQLite will surely be slower than Vectical currently. The Vectical core is written in C. It's optimized for n-dimensional arrays. It has typed arrays, whereas in SQLite you also have this uh, di uh, dynamic changes of data types and everything. I'm sure that it's slower. One, one thing that uh, I've been wondering about SQL, SQLite is uh, you know, the new, uh, new CPUs have vectorization instructions. And I, I thought maybe SQLite would be the first program to really take advantage of those vectorization instructions. Ah, uh, vectorization, if you use it as a standard Vectical with an up-to-date compiler, you get vectorization the basic operations of Vectical because um, GCC can do auto-vectorization. You can also annotate, it's, it's a simple C loop. If you annotate it with hash, pragma, OMP, um, uh, I don't recall the exact syntax, then the compiler knows it is allowed to vectorize this loop and it does it for you. So from the C side, it's very <coughs> easy. And I think I haven't done the, the annotations because the overhead by invoking these functions from Tickle is still so slow that it doesn't really matter. But uh, it's, it's like one line uh, code change to make it work. So it's non-issue for Vectical. Arjen? Have you thought of um, uh, including something like op OpenMP to uh, optimize your, uh, your loops? Yeah, that was, uh, that's what I was talking oh, about. Right. I, you just uh, put the OpenMP annotation to the loops and then it will yeah. uh, multi-thread. I think I tested it actually 
and then it turned out that for very short vectors, it is slower because then it starts to start multiple sure. threads. But you can annotate in OpenMP that uh, it's only being uh, parallelized uh, up to things are larger, are larger than so yeah, you can, yeah. You can have that sort of yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that shouldn't be uh, a real problem. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how it's how it plays with uh, the, the threading. Uh, Extension, but it's no problem because OpenMP. I, I already wrote, wrote uh, other programs where I have a computational core in C. It's multi-threaded with OpenMP, and there are several threads in Tickle to offload the computation to a background thread and have the GUI in the main thread. It's no problem at all. Right. It works on Linux, Windows, Mac OS. The other thing is, um, have you considered uh, so adding support for for NetCDF and that sort of uh, packages? Uh, not directly. I'm currently having a package which um, reads HDF files, right. HDF4 and HDF5 files, but it's returning tickle lists because that package was written by me before Vectickle existed, and um, I could easily refit this to return a Vectickle array instead of a tickle list. Uh, for NetCDF, I do not know. I think the HDF library also can read NetCDF or something like this. Uh, I'm almost positive it can. Yeah. And so NetCDF 4 uh, uses uh, HDF uh, underneath HDF. Ah, ah, okay. Yeah. So there, there's quite some compatibility uh, in, in, between these packages. And for storing uh, scientific data, it would be It, it would be great, yeah. You are right. So it's, I think it's not a great, it's not a big deal. So